comments by visitors. Bob, do we have any comments? I have uh, two here uh, that I will put in the minute. Uh, one is the, uh, a message from Don Evans. Um, and she writes that she is opposed to opening schools and gives a variety of different reasons why. Um, and also, I had a correspondence from Wendy Berkeley who um, expressed some uh, hesitant, uh, hesitance of sending her children back to school, um, but also expressed that remote learning was uh, potentially troubling by some of the divide that it poses too. So I will put both of those in the minutes. Okay. So now we have the consent calendar. Do we have a motion on the consent calendar? Make a motion to accept the consent calendar. Second. Motion and seconded. Can we have a roll call, please? Matt Hanlon? Yes. Steve Potter? Yes. Tom McCallion? Yes. Jerry Cannon? Yes. Cody Donahue? Yes. Ed Lavasser? Yes. Maggie Larson? Yes. John O'Brien? Yes. Todd Marsh? Yes. Announcements 4.1 Superintendent's Update. Uh, the first is the uh, program assurances for the ESSER funds. Uh, that has the school relief funds. Those have come in and part of the, just like for our other grants, there are program assurances that we need to abide by and, and part of that is forming the board of those program assurances. So they're in your packet for your review and we will be signing those and sending those out. Um, the other is the reopening of school update. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of some of the things that have been going on. You've got a lot of staff working very, very hard all summer long. Usually this is a kind of slower uh, time during the year, um, but this year it's, it's really ramped up in the summertime and we've got a lot of staff working very diligently um, planning for the fall. We've got a number of, of groups at each building that are meeting multiple times talking about remote learning discussing things that went very well during the school year and things that, that certainly needed improvement, talking about things like uh, attendance and how do we account for that in remote learning, daily schedules, assessments, what does the curriculum look like, where do we start in the fall, understanding that there's probably gonna be some lag for in learning for uh, students from the spring. We've got a group meeting for facilities, um, myself, Carl, Lori, Katie have met a number of times and gone over facility needs for the fall and what that might look like, planning for uh, things like additional cleaning, um, dis social distancing, uh, certain plexiguard uh, guards that we can put into place, um, touchless drinking fountains, a lot of those types of things to kind of slow the spread and, and, and see if we can head it off at the pass. Uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee has discussed many of these purchases and, and those are some of the, what we're going to talk about during the retreat tonight. Also data gathering is, is happening in a variety of different forms. We've got a parent student staff survey that has gone out and we had I think uh, over 500 returns on that which was pretty nice. Uh, the group is, is the educational programs and community. Uh, committee is outreach committee is looking over that data right now and, and uh, tabulating that and we'll utilize that data as we move forward for all of our discussions. Myself and Lori have met with the school nurses a number of times talking about protocols if, if a student or staff member should should be ill um, when we come back if we come when if and when we come back to school. Um, PPE needs and, and orders that we're getting out now to make sure that we're fully stocked and ready to go. Checking students and staff in, ordering supplies, um, how do we isolate when somebody's, somebody's ill, what are the procedures in dismissing them, those types of things were part of our discussion. The budget is an ongoing piece of this, obviously we've got CARES money. Uh, so far, the board has, uh, we brought to the board funding for use of, in technology and a technology integration position. We're trying to be responsible in our, in our ordering, so whether we're remote or we're back in, in person, uh, we'll be able to utilize all of the purchases that we're doing. 
The CARES funding is also being used for facility needs and, and or staffing, things like uh, ultraviolet light cleansing trees that we can put in classrooms at the end of the day and, and, and reduce some of the, the germs um, and a lot of other things for, for assisting with the facility. We're also talking about CARES funding to support ongoing professional development. We talked about a technology integration specialist, uh, which again, the position can be utilized whether we're remote or back in person next year. So that would be a, a wonderful support for our, our teachers. And again, we're trying to go through these the spending in a methodical way that, that we can utilize uh, all of our expenditures and all of our purchases, whether we're in school or not. Technology, Lori's been working diligently with Back Bay and looking at all of the all of the technology purchases and getting those online and in and ready to go and, and what we need to support our staff in uh, school as well as in the remote atmosphere. Special education, I have had some discussions with Nancy a number of times in, in what special ed might look like in the fall and over the summer. Some of the in-person um, services that whether they're remote or in the summer or in the fall or in person we're working through that uh, preparing for delivery and what that might look like with whether we're reopened or remote discussing a number of scenarios and also discussing perhaps some increased needs for ppe with special education in certain situations so getting a jump on ordering those I've had some initial contact with the teachers union and other unions um, and I've uh, uh, tentatively set a time to start those meetings next week. We were waiting on the, the governor's uh, announcement today and some of the re recommendations that he's put forward. So we'll be meeting with the unions next week uh, for initial discussions on, on what might, how we might move forward. The professional organizations that are providing us guidance through all of these uh, tough decisions and discussions that we're having, obviously the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatricians, New Hampshire School Board Association, New Hampshire School Administrators Association, the governor's office with the plan that he's released today, about an hour or two ago, the Department of Education, New Hampshire Interscholastic Athletic Association for all of the sports and activities, and uh, the, the state task force for reopening schools and also the city of Summers where trying to work with the city and being consistent with what they're doing. Summer activities, we, we do have some summer activities that are beginning. Uh, we've had discuss, I've had discussion with the athletic director, Steve Hodgson, as well as the New Hampshire Inter Interscholastic Athletic Association that has given us feedback and guidance for starting to have uh, in-person practices and, and, and uh, summer voluntary workouts. Transportation, I've been in touch with the uh, discussions with first student. We've talked about a number of different scenarios. They're ready to work with us with whatever we decide is appropriate for altering bus routes or, or however we, we see fit. Um, we've also had discussions pertaining to what special education and athletic transportation might look like in the fall and understand that there's going to be limitations there as well. Food service, uh, we've been in, in contact with and they are um, working diligently to provide everything from individually wrapped lunches to taking away from self-serve items uh, to increasing their um, their PPE and their, their other structures that they can set up to, to help out with barriers um, as far as food service goes. And the administrative team, we've been meeting weekly on updates of the remote learning groups that are, are, are meeting in each of the buildings as well as starting the process of, of discussing, you know, what might be uh, if, we were, if and when we come back into the building. So, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg and some of the things that are going on and, and as the board works through uh, the decision making process, um, you know, then, then these groups obviously will develop firmer plans to bring back to the board no matter what the, the scenario looks like. Um, and I, I've been um, 
telling people that, that my goal, and, and as we move forward, is to have some sort of an announcement as well as a plan, no matter what is going to happen in the fall by the end of July. If we do it by the end of July and get that out, that gives students, staff, parents, everybody um, three to four weeks to kind of plan accordingly and make the adjustments that, that they need to make along the way as well. So that's a, a brief update, um, and that's all I have for tonight. Okay, thank you. 5.1 Standing Committee's Budget and Revenue. Building and grounds. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just like Bob said in his earlier statement, we were talking about the PPE orders, um, costs for everything that would, would include if we were going to open. Um, just like you talked about the light sticks and everything else. Um, you also, you start, we're talking about the process of if we were to open. Um, filtration systems, to make it very simple, our filtration system is probably about this right now. We have to add this bigger filtration system in all the HVACs, which, had, which would actually add a cost of $20,000. Um, but that is something that we're, we had to look into, too. Um, one of the other um, processes, too, that we're, we've been talking about is since we've added more square footage over to Maplewood, we still have to make sure we add in like another custodian over there. Um, so that was basically a lot of the conversations we had. Um, on top of all the other things for uh, PPE and, and if we were going to start to open a school. So that's about it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Educational programs and community outreach. Yes, we have met, thank you, uh, twice. And our main focus was this, the survey that went out to our community, our families and caretakers, and we received uh, all the data that would be yesterday. Um, over 900 students were represented which we're really happy with that response. Uh, and it was um, a very thorough and, you know, a lot of information is in that and helps us guide that we'll look at later. Um, that was pretty much our focus. Our focus is looking at the data and what's going on in our community and what people are saying about school and remote learning and what their individual um, situations are. So we will be meeting again uh, later this month. Thank you. Thank you. Policy. Uh, for policy, uh, we focused on, uh, in our last meeting, uh, GBEBD, which is our social media policy. Spent some time uh, working through that, and I believe that's um, just about ready um, to, to move forward. And uh, a lot of our discussion really centered around a remote learning policy, which just for clarification, when we talk about a remote learning policy, it's really a policy that says in effect that the school administration will have a remote uh, a remote learning plan and um, and the details and sort of the expectations around that it's not you know outlining policy specific to how we would accomplish any kind of remote learning if that were to come to pass um, so we do have a few things coming up for uh, first and second reading tonight and uh, and I think we'll we'll probably continue to focus on things related to you know COVID remote learning and social distancing and all of those things that are top of mind right now for our for upcoming discussions and legislative advocacy sorry i skipped that one before oh, yeah, let me, uh, we did postpone legislative advocacy um, in order to uh just make sure that everybody's got the capacity to focus on things that are a higher priority given that the legislative session is done and um, so so we'll resume that in uh i think in about uh, four to six weeks with a focus on uh, discussing how we can start to build uh, stronger connections to our legislative representatives aside from uh, Representative Cannon and uh, uh, but but talking about all of our other representatives and making sure that we're building those connections thanks thank you Joint Commission we met uh, last week was it last yeah. week it seemed longer than that uh, we discussed the um, the end of the of last school year um, where the budget was cur currently tying up the end of last school year. Um, we also discussed the, um, the new school board possibly coming to the football field and um, where we are um, heading into next school year and what we were looking at as far as um, remote learning, um, physical, in-person, face-to-face learning, hybrid, those type of things. We had a brief discussion about that as well. Um, that's all I have for the Joint, uh, joint Commission. Uh, JBC? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, GBC moving very well. Uh, Maplewood project, um, as you see, hopefully very soon be closing up walls. Um, 
can't wait to see that obviously um, being put together. Other other discussions that we've we've talked about is obviously if we're putting things back for the toilets and the in and the sinks and stuff like that, going to touchless so everything is just basically automatic. Um, it's just being proactive, obviously. Um, elevator project, same thing. Obviously, since we've had somewhat of a drought, <laughs> that's helped with water problems or anything like that. So things are moving really cool. Cool. They're, they'll basically be closing things up and starting to get things done. Um, hopefully, soon enough to get the school back up and and they'll be able to use that uh, technology back. The, uh, the elevator itself won't be right up right away, but I mean, they'll be able to put the uh, technology back through so people can start to get in there and start to feel like, okay, now I can start doing my stuff. Um, offices can get back together and stuff like that. Um, obviously, this is, this is a really, I hate to say it, I don't want to jinx us, but <laughs> very good so far with this project. Um, a lot of things going on, so it's been very good. Um, Again, nobody being in the school, that helped. A lot of things moving a little bit faster. And we'll just see how this all pans out at the end. So thank you very much. Okay. So now we're on to new business 6.1 uh, policies for first reading. I would entertain a motion to have the uh, policies read by title only. So moved. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right. Policy IKF. Six point two scoreboard and football fence bids. I can I can go over that. Uh, in your packet, you see the the scoreboard bids. I'll go over that first. We we had uh, one bid, and it was for the football scoreboard as an an identification panel of of Summersworth on top of that, um, as well as the middle school basketball scoreboard. Um, it was, it, it did come in, uh, you see we had budgeted $20,000 and it came in almost 22000 but we've saved money in other bids, so that is recommended. Um, and the other piece is the, the fence. We had talked about that before. The Buildings and Grounds and Transportation Committee went back and looked at the football field and, and decided that a, a shorter fence in length was a, a little more appropriate for where we were, we were thinking of putting it. So the, the fence um, now, I believe, is it's 180 feet long, um, and it, uh, the total cost for that is $5,018. Both of those projects are recommended. Okay, so these are coming forward at the next meeting? Well, they are. Right. We had discussed about the possibility of, of perhaps waiving uh, rules because it is a little bit time sensitive in getting both of these projects done. Steve? Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Can somebody enlighten me on the benefits of the fence, especially in the environment we're in, where we need to be saving as much money as we can to comply with all the rules and the safety precautions we have to do? I don't see it's prudent this time to put a fence up. Tom? That's fine. You get John to do it. I have the questions and I'll go. Who wants yeah. John, do you want to take it? What's the rationale? Yeah, the, the rationale behind the fence is there's, um, the, it was to keep all of the fans away from right where the, it's in front of the concession stand. Right. And it runs pretty much the, I think it's the 30 to the 30 on the, on the yard lines of the football field. And it, it's a buffer to keep the fans away from the bench and the, and the players right there. So it's just a, it's, a, it's another safety barrier for um, separating the fans from the players themselves. Okay. What's the issue with the current rope system that's there? Why can't we use that? Um, what, was, what was brought to the Buildings and Grounds Committee was that the barrier that we have now is, is a rope. It can be kind of pushed and stretched. And, and, and what they've seen is the fans just keep kind of inching up towards the, the players. Um, we just it, have to move the rope back. Yeah, if it, I, I agree, Steve. I mean, it's not, it's not something that, that can't be uh, lived with if we don't have it. But that's the rationale of why, that, why it was brought forward. The other concern I have is we're spending money and we're going to spend it wisely. And we never know. There's always been talk about trying to fix that concession stand, trying to fix the field. And the last thing I want to do is put something in there that has to be ripped out and may not be able to reuse like a fence. I look at that as wasted money. 
And I know it's not a lot of money, but at this point, to me, we're going to be saving every penny we can for the future benefit of that school. <clears throat> when we looked at the fence, obviously, if you, you'll you see it. I, I don't know if they got the whole list of the fence around the whole place. So it, originally, this is what they wanted to do, is they wanted to put the fence all the way around, but not in front of the bandstand, OK? One of the things that I talked to, and Jerry was there, obviously Todd was there. One of the things I asked Steve is, do we need this fence? I mean, what's the sense? Because obviously, when you put a fence in, you know, a $30,000 fence, we're basically, you know, we got a mow around it, we got a weed whack now around it, kids can get hurt, stuff, and the list goes on and on and on. And I, I was agreement on the fact I'm right on your side. One of the things that me and uh, Steve had talked about, and Bob, um, and they were there, um, is when you have halftime, you've been there, everybody's been at these games, if not, when you're at halftime, what ends up happening is there's such a con congestion over by the stand where everybody getting food and stuff, and the game starts off right after halftime and there's still a lot of people there. The problem became, and this is from Steve and everybody else, there's so many people at that one spot that if we actually had just one fence there that can't be moved, and it is going to be 25 feet back, so it's going to be further enough away from the, from the soccer line, also from the football field, it would actually keep everybody back because you know as well as I do, a lot of coaches can't go past the 35-yard line and they can't go down that field anyway. So having one barrier fence was a smarter play for this versus a fence all the way around the field. So that's why I just kind of kept it so that it would be secure. It would keep everybody back. Nobody can move it. The rope can't move. The rope's going to get tied to the end of each one, and they'll actually continue around the field like they normally do. So we figured, well, let's look at the price of that, and this is where the price came in at lower cost. I'm agreeing with you on two things. I don't think we should put something there that if we're going to take it up, if we're eventually going to do a, a stand. The other flip side to this coin is with this whole covert thing now, I don't even know if we're going to have sports. So there may be something we need to think about going further because um, this doesn't have to happen, but it does have to be at least talked about. Um, so if people have concerns, please bring them up. But this made the better rationale you know, for us to have that base right in front of there because again, if you go to these games, you do see a lot of people at halftime because they're all getting things from the concession stand. And all of a sudden, it just goes over after about third quarter. People are trying to get on the field and go from there. So. Yeah, so I agree with a lot of what's being said. I've had issues. When, we, when I first saw this, my main issue, especially when it was so much far forward, I didn't play football, but I played soccer. I know I would end up cleats up in that thing real quick. Um, so I saw safety, the safety hazard immediately. Um, also, getting emergency vehicles, we talked about this, onto yep. the field the way it was originally constructed was just a, it, it was just a bad idea. Um, I also agree, I don't think we necessarily need to spend the money on this right now, not knowing if there's even gonna be sports. Um, is this something that we can plan further down the road when we go to maybe fix the concession stand, which we know is going to be looked at? Um, maybe there's a way to alleviate some of the stress depending on how that gets situated. Um, I'm totally in agreement with that. So, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Tom, you mentioned 25 feet. Is that 25 feet from the soccer sideline? No, it's <clears throat> it's 25 it's it's 25 feet from the sideline itself. From the football sideline. From the football sideline. Even 25 feet from the football sideline, it's pretty darn close to that concession stand. There's not a lot of room there. Right. Not a lot of room. It gives I you mean, five. It wasn't gives, it leave 10 feet. No, it gives you five feet in front of the concession stands, basically. Yeah, that's not enough for no, the I mean, concession stands. But here's, here's just so we're all in the same agreement. I want to make sure we're clear. This is an af you know, as I'm asking the athletic director, what is this something that you need? He stated yes. So why? I'm just trying I'm to communicate. Here, but I'm not hearing why we need it. Because right. we've had larger crowds watch football games oh, yeah. back in the day. Yeah. All I keep hearing is the crowds in our day are not the same. I don't see what the issue is. Right. That's just my point. You got that moment. John? I, I, uh, I would move that we table this conversation. I think you hit the nail on head. We don't have the money. We, but in all likelihood, we're not going to have contact sports, a, a highly you know, physical sport like football, with large crowds this fall. So there's not a timeliness issue with it. I, I, would, I think I would, I would move that we just um, move on to this topic. So you may, are you going to make a motion to kick this back to building and grounds? Yes, I, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Second. So motion and seconded. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? OK, so it moves back to aye. building aye. and grounds. Perfect. Thank you. Do we have a motion on the scoreboards? I'd like to make a motion to do the same for the $21,000 for the scoreboard. 
in this climate just doesn't seem doesn't seem like the necessary or immediate need to use funds. Second. Second it? Okay. Do you have any dis any discussion on that? Okay. Motioned and seconded to send the scoreboard back to building and grounds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. It all goes back to building and grounds. Thank you. Okay. Old business, 7.1 policies for second reading by title only. Same thing. Uh, all right. So, uh, DJH KCD, Public Relations and Gifts. Uh, I won't read it again because it's really just the same policy filed under uh, two headings um, for uh, to be located. Um, also, DMA JJE, District Fundraising Activities. Thank you. Do we have a motion on the policies? I make a motion to accept the policies as presented. Yeah. Motion is seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. 8.1, personnel nomination. Tonight I have one nomination for you. Uh, it is for John McCafferty, and it is for a special ed case manager position at the high school. John brings a great deal of experience, and we're very pleased to nominate him for the position. Uh, move to accept the nomination of John McCafferty as presented. Second. Motion and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 8.2 city request. The, the city council uh, voted last evening to formally request the school board approve the use of Idlehurst Elementary School and the high school as voting poll locations for the upcoming September and November elections. Those are two uh, student days on your calendar. If you approve this, we would have two options. One is to do remote learning on those two days, which under the, under the existing climate, I think we could pull off pretty easily. Or we could have that as a non-student day and make those days up at the end of the school year. Um, but either way, I think that, I think that uh, we certainly can make that work. We, just, we couldn't have school on those days because then we would have the general public in the buildings um, as a polling location while the students are in the building. But I think that we can, we can certainly pull it off. Steve. Uh, I am extremely happy to hear this. I would be definitely in favor of it. And I would uh, basically think of a remote day instead of pushing it to the end of the school year. I... John. All right, just a quick clarification. Are we making a decision on just whether or not to allow these schools to be used as a polling place or also what we do with that school day? Um, you are responsible for setting the school calendar, so this would be this, potentially an adjustment of the school calendar. If you're, if you're going, I think you should approve both. You should approve it as a polling location, and if it's a remote day, approve it as a remote student day, and then we will take care of the rest. Thank you. Cody. Um, I would be in favor of this. I would. I think I would also like to add, like the day before and day after, maybe have a discussion about making those remote days of, as well to allow for like ventilation of the cafeterias. Is that where they are? Cafeterias and like full proper cleaning techniques. I know we're going to get into those discussions about, you know, if students are in the building. But if students are in the building. Um, I think that would be appropriate because if we're having hundreds of people from outside of the school community coming in the building, I think that, that is a reasonable kind of way to kind of mitigate that risk. Okay, do we have any sort of a motion? I'd like to make a motion to, um, this is okay, Bob, can you hear me? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to, have would it be November 3rd election day have our schools Idlehurst and the Summersworth High School be polling locations for their respective wards. Second. 
motioned and seconded. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And we'll have further discussion on how we're going to change the schedule if needed at that point in time. Yeah, further, further note. Okay, future meeting dates and suggested agenda items. August 11th is a Summersworth School Board meeting. Um, August 25th is a school board meeting uh, with Building and Grounds Transportation Committee. Um, August 25th is a, another school board meeting, and then we'll be into September. Just for clarification for the public, would these school board meetings at this point in time be um, remote or will we meet, be meeting in person? We do not know yet. I think it might depend on the subjects on the agenda. All right, do we have closing comments by board members? Oh, closing comments by visitors. I didn't, I didn't see there were any visitors. I'm not used to that. We're used to being on Zoom. Sorry, closing comments by visitors? None? Board members? Todd? Yeah, just very briefly, I'm, one, I'm looking forward to, to our uh, retreat right after this meeting, our retreat in, our, in the same desks that we're at. Um, just, I just want to comment briefly about the fence. Uh, I appreciated the discussion about the fence. Um, I'm, I'm on the Building and Grounds Committee, and I think we had a really good discussion at that level as well. The fence went from this to this. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be even this. And I will admit that uh, that was you know, and, I, and I did support it moving forward as a committee member, but that was one of those decisions that, that lingered with me because I had other questions and, and thinking about potential unintended negative consequences of if we have a fence, will, that, will people be gravitated to the fence? Will there be more people? Will there be people closer than they would have been? With, um, so I, I appreciated that and I think it, it's definitely deserved a, uh, another look. Also, um, I recognize that many residents are, uh, uh, have many concerns and questions, and uh, as a resident myself and a parent, I also have concerns and questions regarding uh, uh, school startup uh, and the options, and uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion after this meeting, and uh, I have no doubt that uh, the people of the city of Summersworth, parents, uh, are looking forward to uh, decisions by the end of July. Further comments? All right, do we have a motion? Oh, Cody. Yeah, I just want to um, say thank you to all the parents who filled out the survey that we emailed out. Um, there was, I don't know the exact number right now, it was over 500 responses, I believe, and it was representing over 900 students, as um, Maggie said before. Um, so thank you, everybody, who did that, because there is a lot of valuable information in there, and it's really going to help um, decisions moving forward. Thank you very much. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. Can we have a roll call, please? Matt Hanlon? Yes. Steve Potter? Yes. Tom McCallion? Yes. Jerry Cannon? Yes. Cody Donahue? Yes. Ed Lavasser? Yes. Maggie Larson? Yes. John O'Brien? Yes. Todd Marsh? Yes. Okay, we are adjourned.